accounting for overheads. A business needs to establish the total cost of a unit of their products to value it, determine the selling price, and or analyze profitability. Now, this process will include estimating the unit cost of material, labor, overheads, both production and non-production. We've already treated costing of material and labor. So in this episode, we will be tackling overheads. That is how to allocate annual factory expenses of say $500,000 per annum on produce units to arrive at its total cost. So when we talk about overheads, these are costs of indirect nature necessary for the operation of a business. So for production, the total cost of a needle and the remuneration of the factory supervisor of a fashion business will be overheads. Now, all non-production expenses are deemed as overheads. Okay. So examples of overheads will be the rent, utilities, insurance, wages of supervisors and accountants, etc. We move on to discuss what absorption is. So absorption is the method of apportioning indirect expenses to a product to arrive at its overhead cost per unit. Now, estimating the unit cost of direct labor and material are straightforward as they are directly traceable to the product. It is easy to determine the amount of fabric and labor time needed to sew a shirt and thus arrive at their cost. Now, overheads are not directly linked to production and thus difficult to tie to a unit of a good or service as a direct cost. For example, it will be tedious to determine at first hand the amount of electricity consumed sewing a shirt. So as the salary of factory supervisor or the human resource staff due to their fixed nature. So absorption is normally done by dividing the total overhead cost by the total production unit, especially when there is just a product involved. So let's test our understanding. Ajua PLC manufactures wardrobes. A wardrobe uses 5 kg of wood at a cost of $10 per kilogram and takes 5 hours to manufacture. Now, labor is paid an hourly rate of $5. Yearly fixed cost of production is estimated at $600,000. Budgeted annual production of wardrobe is 20,000 units. Now, we are supposed to calculate the cost per wardrobe. So we have fixed cost here of $600,000. We are supposed to spread this on the total unit to be produced of 20,000 to arrive at the total cost per the wardrobe. So in solution, we'll start with material. We get $50, that is the five kilograms at $10 per kilogram. For labor, it's gonna be $25, that is five hours at $5 per hour. Now, when we come to the overhead, we are going to get $30 per unit of a wardrobe. That is the total overhead cost of $600,000 divided by the total produced quantity of 20,000 units. So that 600,000 has been absorbed onto each product of a wardrobe. So we will be able to arrive at the total cost per wardrobe. That is going to give us $78. Let's now move on to discuss multiple products being produced in a single factory. In the earlier scenario, the overhead is absorbed to a single product. Here, we are considering when the indirect expenses are incurred over the production of two or more products. So now the first thing to do is to determine the basis of absorption. Now the basis of absorption is also known as a suitable criteria. Now this is the best standard for apportioning the overheads onto the product. For example, a suitable criteria for apportioning rent will be the space occupied. For utilities will be the amount of electrical gadgets used. For apportioning canteen expenses will be the number of workers in each department. Okay. So in practice, it is up to the management accountant to decide on the most appropriate basis of absorption to be used. Now the overheads now will have to be apportioned to the product involved as a whole based on the determined suitable criteria. After that, each overhead allocated to the product will now be absorbed onto the quantity produced to arrive at the overhead cost per unit. Let's move on to test our understanding.
Edlin Limited produces shirts and trousers in one factory. So we have two products here. A shirt uses three yards of fabric at a cost of $3 per yard and requires two hours to produce. A trousers uses two yards of fabric at a cost of $4 per yard and also requires two hours to produce. Labor is paid at an hourly rate of $5. Annual fixed cost of production are budgeted to be $500,000. Edlin plans to produce 30,000 shirts and 20,000 trousers. Overheads are to be absorbed based on labor hours. We are now to calculate the cost per unit for shirts and trousers. So for solution, we'll split it into two. For material, for shirt will be $9. That is the three yards at $3 per yard. Trouser will be $8. That is the two yards each going for $4. Then we come to labor. It will take two hours to produce a shirt. Each hour is supposed to be paid $5, leading to $10 for the shirt. It will also take $2 to produce a trousers, also going for $5, leading to $10 for the trousers as well. When we come to the overheads, we are now supposed to absorb it. So we will get $10 for shirt, that is the two hours by the $5. Then we'll get the same two hours by $5 of $10. We'll get to the workings very soon. The total cost per unit will be $29 for the shirt then $28 for the trousers. So now when we come to how we were able to get to the overhead cost per unit, we will first apportion them onto the product being produced. We were asked to apportion the overhead based on labor hours. The total labor hours for the shirts will be 60,000. That is the 30,000 shirt to be produced and the two hours required to produce each shirt. For trousers, it will also require two hours to produce. They budgeted to produce 20,000. So it will be 40,000 trousers. So when we come to the overhead rates or the overhead cost per unit, it's going to be the total overheads of $500,000 divided by the sum of the labor hours for the shirt and the trousers, giving 100,000. So you sum the 60 and the 40. Okay, it will give $5 per hour. So when we move on to the absorption, if it takes two hours to produce a shirt, you multiply the two by the $5, giving ten dollars in each product we move on to discuss when there are multiple departments in the same factory here the overheads are hinged upon the activities of several departments manufacturing their goods so for a fashion business we can have the sewing finishing and maintenance department in a factory space or a building so they will be sharing the overheads what we'll have to do is that first the overhead must be apportioned to the department based on the suitable criteria. After that has been done, we will secondly have to apportion the overheads among the products. So if the department manufactures numerous products, then it has to be apportioned to each product within the department. If on the other hand, there is a product being produced by one department or a unit, then we will now have to move on to absorb the apportioned overhead to the product. Let's test our understanding again. Edlin Limited produces shirts and trousers in the same factory. The factory has two departments, sewing and finishing. A shirt uses three yards of fabric at a cost of $3 per yard and requires two hours to produce, 1.5 hours in sewing, 0.5 hours in finishing. A trouser uses two yards of fabric at a cost of four dollars per yard and requires two hours to produce 1.5 hours in sewing another 0.5 hours in finishing now all labor are paid an hourly rate of five dollars annual budgeted fixed cost of production are five hundred thousand dollars of this hundred thousand dollars is paid out as salary to the managers of the department so sixty thousand dollars to the manager of the department of sewing and $40,000 to that of finishing. The rest of the $400,000 is shared 60% to the sewing department and 40% to the finishing. Now, Edlin plans to produce 30,000 shirts and 20,000 trousers. Overheads are to be absorbed based on labor hours. So we are now to calculate the unit cost for shirts and trousers. So for solution, 
it will start with stating the two products being produced. So the first one is to determine the cost of the direct expenses. So for material, it will be nine dollars for shirt, that is three years for three dollars each, eight dollars for trousers, that is two yard for four dollars each. For labor, they pay them five dollars per hour and it requires two hours, so ten dollars. The same for trousers, ten dollars, as seen in the earlier example. When we come to the overheads, because we have two departments, sewing will have six dollars per shirt. That is 1.5 hours to four dollars per hour. We've been able to determine the overhead cost per hour. We'll show that in the workings very soon. Overhead for sewing for trousers is six dollars. It also requires 1.5 hours multiplied by the overhead rate per hour for four dollars. When we come to the finishing, it requires 0.5 hours to produce at an hourly rate of eight dollars per hour. Hour. that is the overhead cost we'll also explain that very soon so we'll give four dollars per shirt it will also give four dollars per trousers 0 0.5 hours multiplied by the absorption rate of eight dollars leading to the total cost for a shirt of 29 dollars and 28 dollars for trousers when we come to the workings the overheads you realize that for the sewing and finishing there was a categorical determination of the overhead 60,000 to the sewing, 40,000 to the finishing. So we allocate that straight away. Then the rest of the 400,000, we will now have to apportion it based on suitable criteria. Now, they've already given a suitable criteria 60% for sewing and 40% for finishing. So the overhead for sewing will be $240,000, which is the 60% of the 400,000. Then 40% of 400,000 also give 160,000. Okay. So if you want the total overheads, it's going to be 300,000 for sewing and 200,000 for finishing. We'll now move to determining the labor hours so that we divide it by the total overhead cost because the question asks that we apportion the overhead based on labor hours. So in determining the total labor hours for sewing, it is 45,000 for shirts, which is the 1.5 times the total amount of shirt to produce in that period and for finishing it will be 15,000 the entire quantity of 30,000 to be produced by the amount of time to be used to finishing one shirt of 0 0.5 hours for trousers it will be 30,000 hours for sewing 1.5 hour required in sewing at the total quantity of 20,000 units when we move to finishing it will be 10,000 that is a 0 0.5 hours multiplying the 20 thousand units of trousers budgeted to be produced so in total we are going to get seventy five thousand hours for sewing then twenty five thousand hours used in finishing both the shirt and trousers within the particular period so the total labor hours will be hundred thousand that is the seventy five thousand plus the twenty five thousand hours so the absorption rate is going to be four dollars per hour for sewing which is the three hundred thousand total overhead estimated divided by the total hours to be used then we go to finishing it was 200,000 divided by the 25,000 hours giving eight dollars per hour so that's how come we arrived at both absorption rates